All right, man. So we're talking about Leonard Miller today. Oh, nice. We're live. My bad. I was all days out staring at this sexy Canadian. I'm still bro. watching it too. Um, damn, G League player, nineteen and a half years old. Dude's got game. What six nine or how tall is he, bro? Six ten, seven two wingspan. Man, that is fucking sexy. All right, so I got a couple of thoughts. First of all, his shot on the perimeter. I so have a wash. adverse reaction to these types of like the look of the shot, but sure. it kind of reminds me of Jaron Jackson Jr. in the fact that it might be effective. Like Jaron Jackson Jr. has been incredibly effective with a sort of a hitch in his shot. That's kind of weird. Sure. So it could be something like that. What What do you think about his game? Um, I like it. I like it a lot. I like the fact that he loves to um, get that uh, contact. I love the fact that he loves to be physical. It doesn't matter if it's a jump shot. It doesn't matter if it's an ISO situation. It doesn't matter so if he's driving down the lane, going up for a dunk. He like feeds off of contact. And being that he can guard three through five, like that to me, like is is the perfect athlete you need on a team that is all about guarding multiple positions. And if you look at the way he is able to go. We're looking uh-huh. and talking about Leonard Miller. Um, Wash. Um, I I love this kid, man. I, I absolutely love this young man. If you look at the way that he's able to glide through the lane, um, he's 6'10", yes, but that 7'2 wingspan makes him look like he's 7'1". He doesn't – I mean, you look at some of his photos, he, he looks slender and you know thin, but towards the end of the G League, I'm telling you guys, he thickened up. So those are the things that I like to see. When a yeah. player starts off skinny and then thickens up by the end of the year, because a lot of times players lose lose weight towards the end of the year, so it tells me he's still growing in the aspect of his body still maturing, and I like it. So, I think like there's a lot of comps that get me excited, and then I get really concerned with some of the comps. That I'm talking about Leonard to. Miller, guys. So with Leonard Miller, I'm like, can he, can he post up right now? No. Can he really attack on the perimeter right now? No. So he can bring stuff. Like he might be able to be effective immediately in the similar way that like Tari Eason was, come out and really hit the offensive glass, find a way to, you know, carve out a niche, maybe block some weak side shots, like um Triple J there for the Grizzlies, maybe knock down some shots on the perimeter. But in the end, I also could see him ending up somewhat like a Jonathan Isaacs, which is like he has all the skills like you could build that player on NBA 2K, but then like he can't really do any one thing or multiple things that impact a game. So he slides down the bench, sure. becomes a development pr- um, process, and then he never you know, gets in there because there ends up being like a tra- change of regime wherever he gets picked. And then he's not a priority for development. And then next thing you know, he's not on the roster anymore. Like. I've seen players like him who have all the attributes not make it. So I look at him and I'm like, I'm wondering, does he have enough on his own to make it? Okay. Yes. I let me. I I I hate interrupting and I hate being like straight up. We're talking Leonard Miller right now. I I I look at the way that he understands the game, the passing. Um, and yes, he played G League last year. And yes, if he comes to our team and he starts playing on our team. I'm going to expect right off the bat that he's going to start off in the G League. You know, it's just what every player that we're looking at is going to have to come to terms with is that you're not going to get a top um, eight spot coming off um, right out of um, the uh, the draft anymore. I mean, there might be one or two players that earn it by the time that they're you know the season starts, but there's going to be far and few between those players that we see from now on. And so I look at Leonard Miller and I say he covers on a, a few positions for us. He can go the small forward position if we need it to, to be for big ball. Uh, he can take a lot of that contact for Chet, which I like. I like to see players that can get in there and take the contact contact for Chet. Um, he's another guy that primarily um, could get stuck playing power forward, um, but I would love to see in the center position. So if we were to draft him, that's where I would like to see him. The one thing I love about what he does too is that he loves to start the fast break. He gets a rebound and gets going. I think this is like crucial for understanding what the Oklahoma City Thunder like doing. So fitting into this team and the things that he already does, 
I feel like works. He does really great on the switch and pick and rolls. He does really great with getting through the the screens and pick and rolls. And when you get the um, you know, the refs now that are calling the moving screens so much, he'll get a lot of those calls like Dort will. So I see a lot of these things that he's doing at 6'10", and it's like, okay, I don't typically see this for a 6'10 player. So if this guy can turn into a legit center, you know, right next to Chet or vice versa, Chet turn into that center and he goes to that power forward position, I'm cool with that. Um, but that's long term. I mean, short term, he's going to have to do a lot of work to get to that spot that he get, can actually play for the Thunder. Um, I will like it. I think he, there's a couple of drafts I have him at like 16, um, um, some a couple above, some a couple below. So it's not too much of a stretch for us to sit here and say um, Leonard Miller on this Oklahoma City Thunder team will look good. With the ball in his hand um, on the perimeter, he looks like a big man. You know what I mean? He doesn't necessarily look like a super smooth athlete, you know, attacking on the perimeter. So sure. with I his mean, size, yes. he doesn't need to be. But, but I he's wonder... got a great left hand, though. Yeah, And but... dribbling with his left hand, though, like you don't see a big man being able to go right or left. And then here's the reality, too, is that who's his countrymen, fellow countrymen? Shea and Dort. So with um, like Jay Will, right, he wasn't really able to get consistent minutes until he got to the point where he could knock down that three. Sure. Um, and I wonder like if that's like, if that's where we're at with him, if he's like going to have to be able to hit that shot first, like he is a couple of years probably from getting consistent minutes, but his upside is definitely there. Um, I think he averaged 11 rebounds a game. Again, if, if we're going for a big man in this draft, you have to pit him right up in the, the top of, of the big men as far as I'm circling and saying forward, the guy that can play forward and center mm-hmm. in this draft. And I, it's, it's strange because I feel like this, this draft is full of gar- guards and, and small forwards, essentially. You know, small guys that can play forward. So I don't know, man. I, I, I look at him and I'm saying if, if you're looking at a big man in this draft, you have to look at him and circle him and say you've got to give this guy a, a chance. If you're looking for a guard, then you're passing on Leonard Miller. But if you're looking for a big man to slide into that big man spot, and that means if we're not going to sign um, another, get another, get another big man uh, from free agency or resign. Um, what's his name? We just have him on the team. Trey man. Oh, I'm Sarge. Yeah. Sarge. If we don't resign Sarge, then I, I could see us understanding that this is the direction we want to go. But even then, I don't think that he's going to be ready to play day one. I think he needs to take his time to get ready. For Not me, rushed. The reason I end up getting real hesitant with a player like like him is like Leonard Miller is because I really want to see the Thunder continue to draft players like J Dub, even like Usman Jang. Like so, I feel like in that twelve range, there are a couple of players. And to answer your question, Blake, for me, a guy like Gigi Jackson really stands out as someone who. Is you know he's six nine. He can play on the What's perimeter. Up, he can Appreciate get it, man. downhill. He can do whatever he wants to do with the ball in his hand. You know, um, that's to me the type of player I I feel like if you can get a player like that at twelve, who hmm. could be easily be a top five pick in the next draft, but reclassified. Um, that's where I'm I'm kind of leaning, and that's why I look at them, and it's not. Like I do think when you when you look at Leonard Miller, you're gonna look back. Like there were games where I saw Tari Eason play, and I was just like, "We need a guy like him." Yeah, you know what I mean. And oh, yeah. I feel like Leonard Miller will make us feel that way when we play against him if he's on a different team. It'll be like, "Oh man, we should have got him because he's all hustle. He can generate points without having to have plays called for him." Um, he's a great defender, man. I mean, right. think and about like all he can shit. switch on the defensive end. You know, like that. That's what's so impressive is that like. Like to me, when you see a player like this, you automatically like, well, what's his weaknesses on defense? Like, what position can he not guard? And because the way the NBA is, I definitely feel like he could guard five through uh, three. And then if he got bigger or faster, then I think he could go, you know, and play that two guard position if he needed to. And like, that's the thing about guys like this is that. So here's the thing: you got to you got to stop and look at them. My theory is it's more important to have people who can guard one through three than five through three. Because, I agree. So I agree. that's because get, that means like, you have size. You have the ability to have quick feet. Even um, two for even two through four is more important than than five through three. Well, I, but I 
Yes and no, but here's the reason that I I disagree sort of with what they're like saying. We're not on fully. Sesame Street, not fully. Two and four is better than five and three. The reason I have to say this is that, um, you look at J Will, you look at J R E, um, and you look at those guys, and I look at their defense, and I can't like I mean their ability to guard five through three shows me that at times a five through three guy is more valuable than a one through three guy all right like blake saying like bam is he kind of like bam like that's that might be a really good comp and dave Listen, like you're saying like sometimes having you know that five through three is more important i think the heat definitely are going to lean really heavily on bam going into this Jokic game and yeah you're oh, right huge, there are yeah. situations absolutely man like no doubt dude like no doubt um I, th- I think Bam is a good comparison in the aspect of his size, ability um, to play defense, and ability to score at the rim. Um, I think that's a great comp, Blake. Um, so I'm down with you know saying something like that. But the reality is, is that again, I look at Bam as being a what top seven in his position in the NBA ish. Um, maybe some people will disagree with that, but when I say a two way center, I think of Bam being in the top ten. Um, every single I, time, I and, wouldn't doubt that. Like and, I know, I know there's other ways to evaluate things, but one of the best things about Bam is his ability to play within himself and within yeah. the team. Yeah, and he doesn't take away from the team. He doesn't demand the ball. He doesn't do things like that. So for me, yeah, I, I could see Leonard Miller fitting in like that and and, t- and taking over um, the position of center rather than someone saying, oh, well, who is going to play center? Who's going to do this? It's going to be like, oh yeah, well that's Leonard Miller now. Like we have so many other positions already set, you know, like the one position that we have set is that that power, or not necessarily not set because J-Dub is going to do a great job at that power forward position this year. But I do think that there's going to be room for when guys get injured and J-Dub has to play more guard that these young guys like Leonard Miller or like Jay Will or these other guys that are going to be these power forward slash center guys can slip in there and play multiple positions and really help the team out. So again, seasons are so long, 82 games. There's It's impossible to have a healthy team the entire year. So picking up young men like this and giving them an opportunity after a few, you know, missing, a I don't know, 15, 20 games, 30 games, whatever Jay Will missed, and then putting him in to have an impact at the end of the season – is the most powerful thing you can do for um, an organization. And I, I look at Leonard Miller and say, that guy is premier. Like he is one of those guys that you have to t- look at and say, if you're going for a center or power forward position guy, this is the one that you want. So does he change things up on your board at all? Do you, who do you think Thunder but, pick at 12? I mean, that's, that's the biggest, the thing that a I, lot of I, people I, want a shooter. Well, and, and, and that's why, to me, like, I, I look at a lot of different guys in this draft, and I and I circle. And and to me, I, I've got a – it's really down to three guys. Let's just be honest. Like, let's just say I think Gigi Jackson is, I think, yeah. right on the list of what I would consider exactly what the Thunder want, um, you know, for now and possibly in the future. So I look at Leonard Miller as being one of those players, and I think that you have to go with a guard. I think Kobe. you have to not deny the opportunity to get a guard that's going to be something special. And whether Kobe that's Buffkin. Grady Dick playing a guard position, whether that's – I mean, you could go across the board, bro. Like, there's a couple of these guards that could be available because somebody like Leonard Miller jumps into the top ten. Yeah. You know, like, that's what's strange to me is that, like, we don't know what's going to be available. Twelve is, is one of those things where – you have to sit back and just watch how the board goes. Because if you fall in love with too many guys, you're going to sit there and be like, I've got one yeah. of two guys. I don't like this option. And then you're going to be like, the Knicks are going to be like, get the fuck out of this position. Yeah. Like you go with the board, you sit there and say, okay, well, Gigi Jackson is on the top of our list, but if he's not available, then we got to look at some other places. You've scouted everybody. You've done everything else. You've done your workout. You have your own personal board all set aside. I guarantee you that Sam Presti has a place that he can, watch film while he's taking shower of players you know like while he's taking a shit on the shitter he can watch a film of a player like these guys are so locked into every single thing that's going on i don't like when i say a player i know people are going to be like that's stupid why would you say that and and that's the reality is it is stupid so anything i have to do is is nothing compared to what sam and his team are doing scouting these players they're going to know him by by back of their hands 
And if you think about that, that like that's impressive because I, no matter how much time and effort I put into it, will never be enough in comparison to what Sam and, and the Yokohama State Thunder are putting into these players. And I love it, man. And that's why we have a team that's so connected and some playing so well. All right, man. You did a lot there. You convinced me quite a bit about his future. I mean, I seriously think between what Blake mentioned, that comp, I think it's, up, ben? it's relevant. Charles, um, I do up? think if um, a guy like Kobe Bufkin fell, I would love to see us pick him up, but I don't think that's going to happen. Um, I'd love to see us get a guy like Leonard Miller because like, yeah, <laughs> he's the type of guy that plays the right way. And there is, there are some questions about him, but I was thinking about it. If I was pressing, like say I had some questions about his shot, I'm going to go and I'm going to sit down with um, Chip England and be like, yo, Chip, can you fix it? Like, wh can you fix it without like risking, like, Finding ourselves in a Markel Fultz spot where he has to like, dude, I want to be a fly in the, the draft wall in the draft process in that draft room. You know, yeah. I want to be a fly in that where Sam Presti goes around the room and ask each individual coach, each individual workout coach and athletic, you know, trainer and all this other stuff. And like, what do you guys think? How's the doctors? What do you guys think about his records? Like, I want to be in there because you could learn so fucking much. There's no way that these guys aren't, you know, triple checking and, and, and you know, quadruple checking on every single thing. You know, I guarantee they have, if somebody was arrested when they were seven years old, they have the arrest record sitting on their desk. You know, like, that's the thing that's so crazy about this is that, like, no matter how much Grady Dick has done to cover up his dick, I guarantee you they found his dick. Or Thank whoever's Grady. dick. <laughs> um, so... Yeah, I mean, I think this is this is really enlightening thing. Like, we are definitely limited in our our resources for research, and we're, we're trying to make sure we cover as many players as we can. But and there's just not enough film for me to watch and say, yeah, yeah this is this is who. Like, last year was easy because we had Chet. You know, the year before it was easy because Josh Giddy. Like, and we could sit there and say top seven pick. We can isolate who those players will be. But this year, with this draft, it's the strangest thing I've ever seen, guys. Like, like five, like people are, are I've seen, this is what's the craziest thing. I've seen draft boards where it has um, a SAR or SAR, whatever his name is, um, Thompson, the, the other Thompson twin, ahead yeah. of his brother yeah. going at like seven. And then his brother going at like 11, a men. Like, people are crazy about their predictions and what this draft is doing. What's up, Joshua? I, I can't even. I can't even describe it. Like when someone's like, oh yeah, this is the way this draft is going to go. And I'm like sitting there like, yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, we did a mock draft and we got our asses laughed off at. Like, I get it. Like, there's no way to know where this is going. And it's unlike, I mean, we, Mark, last year, we pretty much nailed it. The top eight guys that were going, you know, like, boom, like these are the top eight that are going off the board first. And that was it. We knew it, but mm -hmm. we couldn't do it this year. I mean, I can't even, I mean, top three, I know. After that, it's it's crapshoot. Like I think a man, a man Thompson is going next, but I don't know. What's up, Josh? Amen. I'm just saying amen. Amen. I don't know. I don't know if amen. <laughs> I thought you were saying amen, preaching amen. to me, bro. <laughs> I am. Amen. So it's exciting, dude. We're in June. The draft is in three weeks, so that's exciting. Um, I'll be on vacation, Finals man. Are starting tonight, and there's fresh NBA news happening every fucking day. Yesterday, Dude. the news was the Sixers hire um, Nick Nurse, and then today the news is Monty Williams has been hired by the Pistons for a record deal, seventy-two million dollars guaranteed. Cha -ching, cha -ching, cha -ching, that also could turn into a hundred million dollars. That to the bank, and you know what? This is a new day and age for um, for coaches. Yes. NBA coaches are getting paid like they are players. And Bob Myers is looking for a new job. No, he's not. He's going to take his time. But, you know, I love it, bro. Like, we, we had some things that I felt like were a little bit off the wall to say about Bob Myers. Like, and then I've listened to Brian Winhurst talking yep. over the last couple of days. Or, like, last night because I was up pretty late. It was incredible. He he said a lot of the things that you said, bro, which was like 
this is the beginning, this is an early sign. And I don't know, how often do you talk to, to Wendy? Well, I'm sorry, repeat that whole thing. How I'm often sorry. do you talk to, talk to Brian Winhurst? Oh, yeah, like once every other week, bro. <laughs> it's like it's like you're reading his mind, bro. And he's saying stuff that everybody's like, no way. But like I'm sitting here and I'm like, I've heard all this before from Dave. Well, it's not, I listen. For me, I, I look at this and I'm not, I'm not the smartest guy in the room by any stretch of the imagination, but it's about understanding sometimes where the, the game is, is, is drifting off to. Like when KD and company started entering the NBA, we all knew, right? We all knew that LeBron James and KD and these guys are going to be the new face of the, um, the NBA, right? And we knew it was going to be at least a decade. I didn't know it was going to be 15 plus years that these guys are going to play and dominate the NBA. Like you can't predict there's going to be that long. And so that being said is that there still hasn't been a new crop of young men that have come through. So we all knew it was going to be inevitable. We all knew the change was coming. Mm -hmm. And then the change is now coming. And now you're looking at it saying, well, look at these big guys. Look at these new people that are coming through and look at the next crop and look at like every single crop. Even if people are like, oh, this is going to be a weak draft this next year. It's all going to be strong until it's weaned out everybody that's old of the NBA. Because it's the new style, guys. Like these these old coaches that are sitting there, they can't get jobs right now, or that can get jobs, but are pretty much like off of bonuses sometimes too. Like I feel like Monty Williams. Yes, you can come in, but here's a hundred million dollars if you do this. You got to do this though. Like what is this? What is? Well, I'll tell you what this is: is learning the new style of, of the game, understanding where the game is going to, and that's as simple as that. Like Nick Nurse. Right, that's cool and all. He's probably the most connected to the new game of the NBA of all these coaches. I was, I don't, I mean, I would be shocked if Doc gets a job. But if Doc gets a job, it's going to be because he's still coaching some older guys in the NBA. This new wave of young men are going to dominate. And and to me, like I, I look at Poku, I look at some of these other guys that people haven't given them chances. And it's you know, like it's surprising to me because. No one really knows how the NBA is going to shift. So how are we going to sit here and demand that this is the better player in this position? This player needs to be here and this player needs to be here. We don't know. All we can do is we can sit there and say the offense is going to dwarf like this and morph like this. And then the defense is going to start morphing like this. And what has the defense morphed into? A soft zone. And if you look at it, who plays the best soft zone in the NBA? The we do. Well, how do we know we do? It's because we got the least amount of technical um, uh, defense of three seconds or whatever the fuck it's called. Like um, whatever technical delay of game or whatever they, they call for defense of not yeah, being in place. Yeah. yeah. And so the point is, is that like you look at this and you're saying, okay, yeah, but that's that's one thing. But we're also the youngest team. We also have the best defense in the league. Like there's so much to look at this team and say, okay, there's no way that you can't project this team to be a top five team over the next couple of years. Because when they're young and they're getting along, they believe in each other, they have the best defense in the league, and now they're starting to put all the rest of the pieces together. And all the rest of the pieces are together is this draft, is Chet, is the future drafts. Because where is Sam going to move up into the future drafts? How quickly is he going to be able to get these guys that are going to be placed the next guys? And everybody's like, oh, well, we can't lose this player. We can't lose this player. Well, guess what? If a player outplays a player... I'm sorry. You got to say goodbye. We're a small market. We're a small market. We don't have the ability to say Jordan Poole, please don't go anywhere. We want you to stay for and we'll give you 140 million dollars to stay. Don't please don't go anywhere else. Like we don't have that luxury. We can't throw money at people to stay that are turns out six men. The Warriors don't either. Yeah. Like this is ridiculous. We have got to stay on focus and and on course. Like a player comes in, outplays a player. I'm sorry Maladon. We love you. We hope you have success other places, but you're so far down the point guard list now that you're not going to breathe. Go find another place to play. Like Isaiah Roby, another one of our favorites, you know, eventually got pushed out. And this is what's going to happen until we have everybody set in the top 10 guys. It's just going to be this motion of people moving in and out. And I love it, man. Smith stuff. I love it too, dude. I think it's great. I think. It's the vision for a way to continue to inject new talent, um, not be afraid of having too many good players. And 
find yourself where you're competing on the roster for, you know, for positions that are much lower, I think, than a lot of people's, you know, it's, it's fight for the top 10, fight for the top 14. You know, we, we can get that deep, especially if you're adding these really solid players on rookie contracts, that's similar it, to, to J-Dub. And that's, that's what it's all Sammy. about. Sammy! Sammy, thanks for joining us. Yes. All We've right. Been waiting for you. I've been waiting for you, man. I've been waiting go. for you. All right, guys. So Sammy is my boy and uh, been listening to our show for a long time. And in fact, I went back to see when his first comment was. And there's so many comments that he's made. Couldn't find it. But Sammy, I want you to explain to them, if you don't mind, what exactly you sent me. Because this is truly spectacular. Um, and he sent me a jersey. And I telling you guys i've been excited about this the moment he's told me about it it's got some serious Truly spectacular all right serious names on it dude because i've watched so many of giddy's films right especially when he was like coming through the process and i saw this jersey bro and immediately i'm like that's one of the baddest ass jerseys in the nbl all right guys this right here <laughs> <laughs> and it's signed oh my gosh sammy this is amazing are you serious all right andrew so it has Gaze andrew gaze ben simmons dad josh giddy's dad and it has some other guys as well um i just can't even it's gaze's jersey guys i think gay signed it too <laughs> i know dude yes bro yes all right this is going up right now i gotta put it up this That's is unbelievable, way, dude. dude. I got to turn this around. Melbourne's Tiger Top. Oh, my God, dude. From Sammy Dog. Dude. That's so dope. Fucking love you, Sammy. I love you, man. Unbelievable, man. dude. Yeah, man. I've been learning a little bit more about Andrew Gaze as he came over to the States to, you know, Fucking pump dope. up um, <laughs> Timos. No, some, who was it? They, he came over this um, summer with um, everybody who was, like, pumping up the all the giddy talk and turns out Andrew Gaze and Giddy go way back and that way back, dude, that's an indicator of how far back they go because I bet Josh was amazing. A baby at that point when that Jersey was signed. Oh, I'm yeah. guessing Sam, Sammy, do you know when the Jersey was, was signed? Yeah. 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 It's amazing though. I, I'm going to look at it like every day. I mean, look at that thing. It's amazing. That's super dope. Gaze. Yes, dude. Pumped I think up, a, man. Oh, yeah, dude. Josh Giddy's dad had the craziest hair, man. Craziest hair in the NBO. And that's one of the reasons that I love that. That jersey is that it represented that, that crazy hair that Josh Giddy's dad had. That's awesome. Sammy said you should take it to a Thunder game and wear it, and Josh would check it out. That'd be definitely will, man. Get a kick oh, out of it. Definitely will. Man. Dude, that's amazing. That's fun, dude. That's awesome. So, obviously... We're a tight knit community, like a family here, hanging out and get to see some really cool stuff. Um, turns out, because of everybody here, we found out so many things like Ben Simmons and Josh Giddy's dad played on the same team. And, you know, we've learned so much about the um, AFL and the NBL from everybody who. who Sammy's definitely been, been one of those guys that have been teaching us as well. Guide us into the, you know, all the understanding of the Australian elements of the game. So it's been really fun. And I feel like that Jersey obviously represents so much to us. So we appreciate that from Sammy for sure. And, and that's going to stay there guys. And anytime I'm on my show, I just want you to know that, that that's not moving. So that will always be represented. So I appreciate Sammy. It means a lot to me. And there's certain things that I obviously that I have that, that, you know, represent here, like my Muhammad Ali gloves that my brother Mark gave me. I've got um, other pictures and other things around that, uh, you know, means something to me that I always, I always put up and, and keep up. So again, I really appreciate it, man. Nice, nice, nice. That's awesome, man. What's up, Phantom? Um, so I am pumped, bro. I'm pumped. Like this whole um draft time, everybody's getting zeroed in on what's going on with the Thunder. Good reason, man. Yeah, it's it's exciting. There's a lot happening, bro. We've got some more players that we want to cover as we get closer, um, but. In the meantime, like if anybody has more players they want us to cover us, yes. like drop them in. Leonard Miller was on our list, but we definitely bumped it up a few slots because people kept saying you gotta check him out, you gotta check him out. And um I love it, Dude, man. I think I, I love I, I gotta say is I, I don't remember the person that always said Leonard Miller, check out Leonard Miller, but 
you know who you were, put your name in the comment. And I just want to thank you because at first I was like, I will look at Leonard Miller on my own fucking time. And finally today when Mark brought him up, I'm like, you know what? Let's just do it today because, and I'm telling you guys, I, I was blown away. Now I did saw, see some ignite games, um, but I did not remember watching Miller play those games. And I don't know why he didn't stand out to me, um, but he just didn't. And, and that's okay. But watching him now and watching the film that I watched on him, watching a couple games that we watched, I was I was really impressed with what he can do. So thank you for the person that said that. We appreciate you guys. And we'll be back, bro. We'll be back. We got at least one more day coming up for the weekend. But we hope you guys will join us. We'll see you then. Sammy, you're the man. You're the fucking man.